Sanctum. Saints of God, come on, put those hands together. Let's praise Him today. Let's praise him. Yes, it's just something about Sunday morning. Well, said I can't on, wait. I can't all wait. To Sunday morning. To Sunday morning. To sing and shout. To sing and shout. And praise the Lord. Praise well, the Lord. Well, ain't good to lie. Sunday morning, Sunday morning, we gather together, gather church together, in one accord. Hey, said something about, about Sunday morning, Sunday morning, said it makes me happy, me happy deep inside. Deep well, I thank God for every one of my days. Good morning and welcome. We are so glad you have joined us this morning. We're going to have a great time worshiping the Lord and the Holgate Street Church of Christ welcomes you. The call to worship this morning is from Psalms 118, beginning in verse 22, and it reads, The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, it is so good to be back in your presence. It is so good to be able to acknowledge who you are and the marvelous things you have done for us. Father, thank you for each and every blessing. Thank you for the fact that we are your children. We want to worship you this morning, and we ask that you bless us in our time together. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. We worship you. All right, Saints of God. I want you to forget about all your troubles and your trials. We receive the power. It's right now, it ain't about you. We give you all the of the glory right now. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you. Why, y'all? For you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah. Together, together, together. That's why we worship you. We worship you. Oh, I need some believers up in here, sir. Come on. We worship to you yeah. in yeah. this house. I present my body in the sanctuary. A living sacrifice. Give you all the glory. We give you all of the glory, give you all the glory. Yeah. The glory yeah. right now. Do I have any true believers up in here? We honor you. Just wave your hands. For you're the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the Lord of lords. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh, that's why we worship yeah. you. Yeah. You, you don't have to be old to praise him. Come on, young folk. I got some young folks up in here. I, I know that the hour will come yeah. Come yeah. Tonight. I know that the time is right now. talking about. Come on, let's praise them together. Come on. Let's put your hands in there, y'all. I'm telling you what it did for me, y'all. Uh-huh. 
Oh, you can take those halos off. We all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. Come on, that's why. I'm praising Jesus. Come on, saints. Time for us to quit being quiet up again. Yeah, oh, yeah, I need a believer up in here. Yeah, come on, my good friend Charlie from ASAP. Come on up here. Come on up here. Oh, 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 Father, we've been looking forward to this uh, time once again all week, this opportunity that we have to worship you, to exalt you, to lift you up, to praise your name. You are our God, and we are your people. Father, you have provided for our needs, and we want to say thank you. You have provided for our salvation, and we want to say thank you. You have provided for our future. You've given us hope, and we want to say thank you. You are indeed a wonderful Father and a great God. Father, we also humble ourselves before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the head of the church. He deserves our love because of the love with which he loved us. He deserves our obedience because of his obedience to you. He deserves our devotion because he was devoted to your plan of salvation. Thank you so much for a king, for a savior like him. Father, we uh, want to thank you for your spirit that dwells within us. We want to thank you for his continued guidance, for the counsel that he gives, for the fact that he brings into remembrance the things that you have taught us, for his abiding presence, for the fact that he is always with us. Father, we want to thank you for your church, for the design of it, for the fact that everyone has a place, for the fact that you have put it together as you see fit, not as we see fit. Father, we're so thankful for each member of it. We pray that you would be with each one of us, that you would bless us, that we may truly fulfill your purpose as we grow together in love, in unity, and in faith. Father, we want to be the body that you would have us to be. Father, we pray that you would be with all of our number that are ill and that you would heal them. Father, we know that some are struggling, and Father, you know what they're, they're struggling with, and we ask that you... Give them the strength that they need to this difficult time. Father, we ask that you be with all those who are in mourning this morning, that you comfort them. Father, we're so thankful for the life of Cora Evans, for the way that she touched many of us, for the grandmother that she was, for the mother that she was. Father, for her life, for the blessing that she was. We pray that you'd be with all those that have been touched by her and her passing. 
Comfort them as only you can and be with them. Strengthen them. Father, we pray for the speaker of the hour. We ask that you bless him and that you bless us through him. Father, we ask that you would help us this morning to see something in the message that will bless our lives. Father, we ask that you would just continue to be with us and guide us and guard us and protect us. We are your church and your children, and we love you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, for his mighty acts and his wondrous works. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Come Lord. Come on, Psalm, once again. Yeah. What a mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord, for his mighty acts and his wondrous works. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, we give you honor. Give. Oh Lord, we give you honor. Oh Lord, we give you honor. We give glory, hallelujah, to our God. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a hole, a pit out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He put a new song in my mouth, even praise to our God. Can you imagine a God who provides and plans for everything that you need? You don't have to ask Him for anything. He's our faithful master, our immutable Lord. Come on now. He's worthy to be praised. Lift the Savior up. Yeah. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Come on. Praise the Lord. What? For his mighty acts and his wondrous works. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. What are we going to give him? We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you honor. Power. Glory. We give you honor. We give you honor. We praise you, Lord. We give you honor. There is none like you. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you honor. You never change. Everlasting Bible says. Oh, beginning and the ending, everlasting God there, beginning and the ending, oh, you know he said the rocks will cry out, you don't praise him, <laughs> say, Come on now. Praise the Lord. For his mighty acts and his wondrous works. For his mighty acts and his wondrous works. For his mighty acts and his wondrous works. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Now we come to the time of the service where we'll be um, conducting communion. I'll be reading to you from Luke 22, verse 19 to 20. And it reads, And he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to them, and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup, after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let us pray together. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much, dear God, for your blessing, your grace, and your mercy. And Father, at this time, dear God, as we uh, come together remembering uh, the blessing that you've uh, given to us, dear God, and your dear son, we ask that God that you bless uh, this time, dear God, bless the bread, dear God, we're about to partake, and the fruit of the vine, dear God, for the blood that was shed for many, dear God. We ask, dear God, that we do it in the spirit of remembrance of your dear Son. All these things we ask in your Son's precious holy name. 
Amen. I will call upon the Lord, I will call upon the Lord. He is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Truly the gift that uh, God has given us is His, his uh, death and His Son, and He's provided us an opportunity. And uh, right now we are uh, preparing for offering. And the gift that we we're going to give to God, we already set aside. And, we decided that we will uh, contribute this to uh, giving to God. And for your remembrance and reflection, I'm going to read for you scripture uh, from 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. It says, the point is this, the person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the person who sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should do as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly, or of compulsion, so God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make every grace overflow to you, so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. As it is written, he is distributed freely, he gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now the one who provides seed for the sower and bread of food would also provide and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of righteousness. Let us pray. Lord, truly a gift that you've given us, dear God, is a blessing to be able to provide, provide for our family, dear God, and provide, dear God, to you our first fruits. And we ask, dear God, that you bless uh, what we will give this day, dear God. We know, dear God, you will provide abundantly to us, dear God, and we ask, dear God, that you be with us, dear God, as we continue to strive, dear God, uh, to allow us, dear God, to be blessed, dear God, with the abilities to provide the talent and the things that you've given us and bless our minds to do, dear God. Bless the offering, dear God, that we brought to take, dear God, that it continues to uplift and build your kingdom. All these things we ask in your son's precious holy name. Amen. I heard, I heard the voice of Jesus, of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay And my burden is light, and my burden is light. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my own. Is easy and my burden is light, and my burden is light. I came, I came to Jesus.
Jesus as I was, we weary, weary and worn and sad, I found, I found in Him a resting place. Has made me glad. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And my burden is light, and my burden is light. Welcome and Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I want to remind you that these uh, messages are recorded, and so I want to encourage uh, you to share this opportunity with your family members uh, and your friends. Also, at 1215, as we do every Lord's Day, we have Kids Talk. That is an opportunity for children to be online live, and we'll have some Bible studies, Bible classes, and activities. Just go to our website at holgatecoc.com and click on the Kids Talk link. In addition, at 5 o'clock every Lord's Day, we have a live opportunity for prayer and encouragement. We'll take your prayer requests individually, personally, and we'll pray for you uh, during this time. And then following our time of prayer, then we'll allow you the opportunity to encourage uh, your fellow brothers and sisters. Once our formal time is completed, uh, we take some informal time in what we call the lobby, just to kind of catch up uh, with what's happening in life. And so we invite you as well to come there. Again, go to the website at holgatecoc.com and click on the link for prayer and encouragement. Now, also, if you're interested uh, in becoming a Christian, responding to the gospel of Christ, um, interested in baptism, or learning more about our church or our ministries, we encourage you to contact us at contact us at holgatecoc.com. Uh, that's our email. And so uh, be sure that uh, uh, we're available here to respond to your needs and your questions or uh, anything else you have uh, in terms of our, our ministry and work. This morning we're continuing in our series that uh, we've entitled Strength for the Journey. Strength for the Journey. What we've mentioned is that life is, is a journey. We have a beginning and an end. But from birth to death, there are multiple journeys uh, that we travel. And so we're talking about these journeys and we're understanding that we need strength for them. And so we're trying to come up with some answers of how we can gain strength for whatever journey that we're going through. Now, when we look at journeys, uh, there's different types of journeys. It could be a spiritual journey, something related to health or relationships, something related to finances or work. And so we want to we share some principles that's going to apply to all the types of journeys uh, that we go through. And so far, where we left off is that we've talked about two items that we need to carry with us just as we pack our bags when we travel somewhere. We want to make sure that we're carrying everything uh, for that trip. In the same way, there are two things that we've been talking about that we need for every single journey that we make. And we've said the two things that we need to take with us are the Word of God 
and prayer. The Word of God and prayer. We need to take these two things with us because uh, they will give us strength. They will help us to be strong. Again, when it comes to our health or our relationships or our finances, we need to have the energy to address those issues. We, we need to have endurance. We need to have uh, perseverance. Because, again, depending on the journey, we, we sometimes become weak. We become discouraged. We lose faith. We, uh, we, we want to give up and quit, turn back. Also, there are obstacles that come our way and many times unforeseen barriers that get in our way as we travel, detours. And so we need to have the, the strength to address those things. We need to have the strength to endure pain or discomfort or inconveniences or confusion. And then we need to ultimately have the strength to finish, you know, to reach the ultimate destination that we're traveling. Now, what we did uh, last week is we talked about uh, the Word of God and we talked about uh, some things that we need to hear from the Word of God. So the Word of God in prayer. So there's some things we need to hear, some things we need to say. So in mentioning these three things, uh, we, we kind of summarize them and we kind of develop them a little bit. So let me just recap those three things that we need to hear from the Word of God. We said the first thing we need uh, to hear are the promises of God, the promises of God. Secondly, we need to hear the faithfulness of God. And then thirdly, we need to hear the insights of God. I mentioned two key promises that we need uh, for every journey. When it comes to the promises of God, again, the idea of promises is that God says he's going to do something and he does it. The first uh, promise that we talked about was the promise of God's unceasing love. God's unceasing love. The idea there is that when you're on a journey, God continues to love you. There's, there's nothing that will separate us from the love of Christ. In Romans chapter 8, we looked at verses 35 through 39, where Paul says just that, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? He raises that question, but he also answers the question. His answer is, there's nothing. There's no one, there's no thing, there's no situation, no circumstance. Uh, he says, there's nothing in all of creation that will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sometimes we experience hardship in our journeys and, and we think that God doesn't love us anymore. So we looked at, at uh, Hebrews chapter 12, which in verse 17, it says that we are to endure hardship as discipline. Any father who loves his son will discipline him because he's trying to train him up in life. In the same way, the Hebrew writer says, endure hardship as discipline. And the reason we, we consider hardship as discipline from our Father is that we understand that, that God loves us. And so we need to see it as such. It's, it's loving discipline. It's not that He's abandoned us, uh, that He doesn't care about us anymore, just the opposite. Because He loves us, He allows us to go through hardship. The second promise we looked at, in addition uh, to God's uh, love, is God's ever-abiding presence. His ever-abiding presence. We looked at Deuteronomy chapter 31, and verse 6 in particular, which says, The Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. So what we can do is claim that promise in every journey, because sometimes we feel like, God has left us and, and we're alone in whatever it is we're going through. But the promise of God is that he, he goes with you all the time. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. The idea of forsaking means that he considers you as, as being unimportant. So those are two promises that we need to claim. So we need to hear the promises of God. We need to hear, secondly, the faithfulness of God. And what we talked about there is that God is faithful, He's reliable, He's trustworthy, He's dependable. And we need to hear that from the Word of God. In Romans 10, 17, the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. 
And that idea that it, that it comes, faith comes, it, it means that it continues to come. That our faith continues to grow as we hear the word of God. And all the stories of scripture affirm God's faithfulness, that he is dependable, he is reliable. So we need to hear the promises of God, the faithfulness of God. And then the third is that we need to hear the insights of God. When we talk about the insights of God, we're talking about learning to see and understand our journeys from God's perspective. And we reminded you of the story of Job, the classic story of suffering, in which Job didn't understand, his friends didn't understand what was going on, but God understood what was going on. And when you learn to see your journey through God's eyes, that strengthens you. So we've talked about what to hear. Now, what we want to do today is talk about what to say. The Word of God, what to hear, in prayer, what to say. There are some things that we need to say in prayer as we are on our journeys. So again, this morning, I want you to think about a journey on which you're traveling right now. And I want to suggest three things that you need to be saying in prayer while you're on these journeys. Now again, uh, these aren't the only three, they're just, they're just the beginning, and I want you to think about other things that you can say and other things that you are saying or have said in prayer on your journeys that have assisted you. And what I want to do is I want to talk uh, and suggest these and draw from uh, the wisdom of the Psalms, the book of Psalms. Uh, when people ask me, they, they'll say, uh, you know, Brother Hurd, I want to read through the Bible. I don't suggest they start at Genesis. Uh, my suggestion is to start at the Psalms. Because what the Psalms are going to do is, is they're going to connect you with God. Uh, the Psalms also, I think what makes the Psalms special is that they give you a language for about every circumstance in life through which you will go. And so I want to draw these, these three things that you say from the Psalms. They also... Uh, the Psalms are, are, are poetic and they're beautiful and, and so they're, they're, they're pleasant to the ears in terms of the words. So we're going to look at the Psalms, three things from the Psalms that we need to say in prayer. We need to read the Psalms and of course the songs, Psalms are songs. We need to, to sing the songs and we have some Psalms that we sing in our worship. But we need to learn to pray the Psalms as well. So let's take a look at these three things. The first words that we need to say uh, uh, in prayer through our journeys, we need to say words of thanks. Words of thanks. We need to tell God, I'm thankful. Psalm 118 is an example. There are many examples of, of psalms of thanksgiving. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Other translations, his love endures forever. So give thanks to the Lord, Psalm 118. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, the Apostle Paul says, In everything give thanks. In everything. Now notice he didn't say for everything. There's a difference. See, it's easy to give thanks when we're in good health or uh, when we have money in the bank or our kids are doing well or our marriage is good. It's, it's easy to give thanks then. But Paul says in everything, give thanks in everything. We need to understand that no matter what our circumstances are, that we have reason to give thanks. If nothing else, we can say thank you to God that it's not worse than it is. Let's say, for example, you had a bad kidney. And, and again, if you don't take care of your diabetes, it's going to affect your eyesight, your feet, your toes, your kidneys. But let's say you had a bad kidney and, 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 and you're complaining about that and, and it, you know, uh, Lord help me. But, you, but could things be worse? Yeah. You could have two bad kidneys, right? Yeah. Uh, you've got 
two bills that you can't pay. Well, what, what could be worse? Having three bills, having 20, you know. So no matter what the circumstances, things should always be worse. You might have a supervisor uh, with whom you don't get along. Could something be worse? Yeah, you could be laid off and not even have a job. So, so we can give thanks to God in every circumstance, and that's what we need to learn to do. The second thing we need to say are words of pain. Words of pain. First of all, in our prayers, we need to give words of thankfulness, words of thanksgiving. Secondly, we need to give and express words of pain. I want to encourage you to read Psalm 88. Psalm 88, the psalmist says, I have cried out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. Do you hear these words? I'm crying out. Uh, uh, incline your ear to hear my cry. What's being expressed here? Words of pain. He goes on, verse 3. He says, for my soul is full of troubles. Now that's a picture. Think about a full glass. It's overflowing. My soul, the, my, my inward person is full of troubles. And this is how, I, how I'm feeling. My life draws near to the grave. You ever feel like things are so bad that you, you, you feel like it's the end? And sometimes you, you feel like you'd be better off if you were dead. Matter of fact, that's why many people commit suicide. He goes on, verse 4. I'm counted with those who go down to the pit. And here it is. I'm like a man who has no strength. See, those are, those are words that are saying, God, I'm, 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 I'm hurting, uh, uh, I'm feeling weak, I feel like I can't even walk, I can't even get out of bed. These are words of pain. Here's another one, verse 5. Adrift among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, and who are cut off from your hand. He's saying, Lord, I, I feel even cut off from you. Here's another psalm, Psalm 13. The psalmist says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? You ever feel like that? You're along your journey, you feel like you're going by yourself, you forget God's promise of his ever-abiding presence. Well, if you feel that way, then tell God. God, I feel like you, you've forgotten me. And, and how long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul and having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? These are questions. Here's some familiar words from Psalm 22. Psalm 22 starts, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do those words sound familiar? Yeah. They're the words of Jesus as he was stretched out on the cross dying for our sins. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You ever feel again like God has said, you're not important, I've got other things in the world to take care of besides your difficulties and your problems? Yeah, we felt that. Well, if you feel that, I'm saying, say it. Say it to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Do you ever feel like sometimes God's not helping? Then say it. You're not helping me. You're from the words of my groaning Verse 2, he says, oh my God, I cry out in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and I'm not silent. These are, these are words of pain. And, and not only emotional pain, but even physical pain. Uh, again, I, I have some level of physical tolerance of pain, but but I got a threshold too. Sometimes it, get, it, it hurts. It's like, man, this is hurting. You need to tell God, God, it's hurting. 
It's okay. You see, God, God is not offended by that. Because we're not blaming Him. Uh, and, and if we feel like blaming God, then say it. God can take it. Because He knows the truth. He knows why we're going through what we're going through. We need to say it. We need to cry out to God in pain. Do you remember Israel in Exodus chapter 3? They are in Egypt, oppressed, in bondage. And Moses is tending the flock of Jephro, and uh, he leads the flock back to the desert. An angel of the Lord appears to him. He appears in a flame of fire in the midst of a bush. And Moses looks at this bush, and, and he observes that it's burning with fire, but it's not being consumed. Moses said, I, I need to see this great sight. Why, why is this bush not consumed? It's burning. It's not, it's not burning up. The Bible tells us that, uh, uh, that when he turns aside to look, God then calls him. He says, Moses, Moses. And Moses answered, here I am. And he says, don't, don't draw near to this place and take off the sandals from your feet because the place on which you're standing is holy ground. Why was it holy? It was holy because God made it holy because he was there. And here's what God told him. He said, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The Bible says that Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. But God told him, here's what he said. He says, I've surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. We need to hear that. God says, I, I've, I've seen it. I'm looking at it. I know it. We need to be assured that everything through which we're going, God sees every detail. Every, every pain, every discomfort, every injustice, every unfairness, everything that's going on, God sees it. So God tells Moses, I've surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. But listen to this. He said, and I've heard their cry. Did you get that? The people, because of their oppression, had been crying out to God and were wondering, God, do you hear us? God tells Moses, I've heard their cry and I know their sorrows. I've heard their cry. I know their sorrows. He says, therefore, I've come down to deliver them. So we need, to, we need to cry out to God in our prayers. You see, when you, when you cry out in pain, God hears you. Sometimes when we're going through things, we, we just need somebody to, to share it with, a shoulder to cry on, just, just being heard. Because sometimes we feel like nobody understands. And so just knowing, knowing that, that there is someone who understands fully. That's why we need to cry out to God. And what happens when we cry out in pain? God hears. God will act. And God will give you strength. So what do we need to say in our prayers as we travel on our various journeys? First of all, uh, we need to say words of thanksgiving. Secondly, we need to say words of pain. Thirdly, and finally, we need to say words of hope. Words of hope. In Psalm uh, chapter 31, Psalm 31, verse 24, the Bible says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All you who hope in the Lord. Listen to that. Those of you who, who hope in the Lord, the message is to be of good courage. What's the promise? 
He will strengthen your heart. When we pray words of hope, what we're really doing, we're affirming our belief about the future. Uh, there's a phrase, uh, being hung by the tongue. In other words, whatever we say and affirm by our, by our mouth, that's confirming what we believe in our heart. So if we say, oh, you know, things are going to be wrong and nothing's going to happen and things aren't, well, you're, 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 you're hanging yourself by your words. Well, just the opposite can happen. You can increase your strength and your faith simply by what you say. Here's an example of words of hope. Psalm 70, 71. Psalm 71, verse 1. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. What are those words? Those are words of hope. I'm, I'm trapped. I'm in prison. But Lord, deliver me. Cause me to escape. I'm in danger. Lord, deliver me. Save me. Rescue me. Verse 3 says, be my strong refuge, to which I may resort continually. You've given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Those are words of hope. Verse 4, it continues, deliver me, O my God. Deliver me out of the hands of the wicked. The wicked have me in, in their grasp, but Lord, I hope in you. I believe you can deliver me. I'm asking you. I'm, I'm announcing it. I'm claiming your deliverance. He says, out of the hand of the unrighteous and the cruel man. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust, and I love this, from my youth. See, you learn to hope in God as a young person that will carry you through all of your journeys through the rest of your life. And what hope is, hope, hope is a, it, it's a good feeling, it's a thought, it's actions regarding the future. It means that you're facing the future with confidence. And see, we need to understand that, that faith and hope, they are two sides of the same coin. What is faith according to Hebrews 11? It's the substance of things hoped for. It's the substance. It's, it's, it's like uh, uh, hope. It, it's kind of irony that's, that's being used here. Uh, hope is something that's intangible, but yet it's tangible. It's substance of what's to happen in the future. And so we, we, we speak words of hope. One of my favorite movies of all time is Shawshank Redemption. I think I've shared that with you numerous times. Andy Dufresne is convicted of, of, of murder that he did not commit. He's locked up in Shawshank Prison in the state of Maine. This movie is about hope. Now, Andy is locked up, but he never gives up. Here's, here's a quote from the movie. Andy says, hope is a good thing. Maybe the best of things. And no good thing ever dies. Love that. He spends 19 years in this prison. Convicted falsely. But because of his hope, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story if you haven't seen the movie. I want you to, to, to watch it. I want you to watch it. Well, a lot of us are, are happy that, that NFL season um, is happening, right? And, of course, today, um, Seattle Seahawks are playing the Dallas Cowboys. And then we got a lot of Cowboy fans out there, right? Okay. And I don't know who your favorite players are um, in football, but, but generally speaking, my favorite position players in the NFL is the place kicker. The guy that kicks the, the extra point, and he kicks the field goals. And did you know that the top 25 scorers in all of football, historically, are all place kickers? 
The number one score in NFL history is a player by the name of Adam Vinatieri. Now you think when it, when it comes to football, oh yeah, it's, you know, it's the running back or it's the wide receiver. No, it's the place kicker who has scored most of the points in history in football. Adam Vinatieri, he, he started playing in 1996. Did you know the, the average NFL career only lasts 2.7 years? And so, so guys who say, hey, I want, to play, I want to play football. I say, well, that's great. Well, what are you going to do after your 2.7 years? Adam Vinatieri has played pro football for 24 years. He has scored 2,673 points since, from the article that I read. But think about that, 2,600 points, over 2,000 points. The greatest score in all of football history. But here's what I love about the place kicker. I love the drama of the kick. You see him preparing on the sidelines. You know, he's got his little three-legged holder. You know, he's there off by himself. He's got the net and he's practicing. He's kicking the ball into the net. He's preparing on the sidelines. And the game, you know, it's, it's on the line. There's, there's three seconds left. And, and the team is, is two points behind. And if he makes this kick, he's going to win the game. Nobody talks to him <laughs> when he's on the sideline. And you know what he's doing? He's picturing that, that ball going through, the, going through the goal. He's hoping. He's thinking about What's going to happen in the future? It hasn't happened yet. He wants it to happen. He desires to happen. You know what he's saying to himself? This ball's going to go through. And you know, if he's a Christian, you know what he's saying? God helped this ball go through. So he gets out there. It's a 49-yard attempt. Everybody lines up. The ball is getting ready to be hiked. And he's there. He's ready. He's in rhythm. He's in position. He's getting ready, and he sees it. And you can see some of the kickers, they kind of do this. You know what they're doing? They're hoping. That's, that's, that's an act of hope. They're seeing that ball go through the hoop. And so he's getting ready. They're ready to hike it. And then the other team calls timeout. <laughs> and so kind of like it's deflated for a minute, right? What are they trying to do? They're trying to ice it. And so they, they watch him. He's out there practicing his kick. You know, he's getting ready. He's thinking about it. And so after the commercial's over, they come back. They line up again. His brain, his mind, is picturing that ball going right down the center. The game's on the line. If he misses it, he's the goat. If he makes it, he's the hero. So they hike the ball. He approaches the ball. He kicks it. And then depending on the wind, you know, some of these stadiums, you know, they've got wind. You see the ball going one way or the other. But in this instance, it goes right down the middle of the goalpost. What a feeling. What, what victory. What elation. He's the hero. They win the game. See, that's hope. That's hope. And so God will strengthen us as we hope in him. Well, what, what is it that we need to hear? We need to hear the, the promises of God in his word. We need to hear the faithfulness of God. We need to hear the insights of God. What do we need to say? Words of thanks, words of pain, words of hope. Here's a, here's a, a sentence that puts it all together. I'm thankful, it's painful, but I'm hopeful. God, I, I'm thankful. My situation, it's painful, but I'm hopeful. And see, when we do that, we, we reach a point in our journey where we come full circle. We start with thanks. We express our pain. We express our hope. And then depending on what happens, we can express our thanks again. Listen to Psalm 30. The writer says, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up. And have not let my foes rejoice over me. Oh, Lord, my God, I've cried out to you and you healed me. 
O Lord, you brought my soul up out of the grave. You've kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. You've turned my mourning into dancing. You've put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. What do we say? We say words of thanksgiving, words of pain, words of hope. We do that, we'll be strengthened on every journey. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you as we travel on our journeys. And we pray that we can say these words, indeed, that will give us strength. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thanks again for joining us today. I want to encourage you again to share these messages with your family and friends. And also at 1215, we'll be on for our live kids talk. Just go to our website at holgatecoc.com. And also at five o'clock, we'll be here to uh, hear and receive your prayer requests and to pray for you and to give you words of encouragement. Again, if you are interested in hearing more about the gospel of Jesus, God's love for you, if you're interested in being baptized, becoming a member of the body of Christ, if you have a need further for encouragement or counseling, please contact us at contactus at holgatecoc.com. We'll see you next time.